Yes. Okay, this will be recorded and I will send you all the soft copy. Uh, I'll send you all the link of the video after the session is done. Okay, so um, earlier on, as I was mentioning, some students have issues with globalization. They were asking me, Mr. Teo, uh, I'm still very lost with globalization. Anybody lost with globalization down here? Yeah, me. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah? So, uh, we have a globalization question here. And uh, let's look at how we're going to tackle this. Um, before we tackle globalization question, we will need to know the subcomponents in globalization. So, anybody can quickly touch on the subcomponents of globalization. What are the subcomponents? Yes, anyone? Protectionism. Protectionism. Remember, Betray. yeah, we are looking at three oh, kinds of flow. Three kinds of uh, uh, uh. yes. We want to okay, so uh, we're looking to capital flow, yes. labor flow, labor. Next, okay, trade flow. And what is the requirement of the question? So the requirement of the question is asking what actually promotes this free trend towards globalization please don't mention against globalization uh, no marks for that okay so they're asking you what promotes the flow okay specifically what promotes each yes okay so i hope your plan is something like that so let's start from home right pick one pick one the flow and address great cap and later. So, pick one and explain. Pick. Hey, the rest, they are not participating. Mute your camera. <laughs> okay, I, I can't hear. Okay, uh, the rest, they are not participating. Mute yourself. Mute. All right. Yes. Okay. Let's start from Inshen first. All right, Inshen, let's go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I can hear, but you later. Yeah, Inshen, start first. Um, the trade liberalization. Okay. What about causes, the, Okay. Causes the increased volume of trade. Okay. In so what is trade, what is trade libera liberalization? Um. It's like increase in the freedom in the trading of goods and services mm. as countries seek to reap the gains from trade based on the theory of competitive advantage. Okay. Okay, you brought up liberalization, right? Okay, this term brings up, what's the meaning of liberalization? Um, like giving freedom. Freedom, all right, more, more access, more flow. So. Um, other than theory of comparative advantage, what actually promotes flow of goods and services? Promotes freedom of goods and services? Uh, effect of what? Effect of like the transport across countries easier. Okay, so you, you can also talk about um, there is a lower or transport cost, right? Transport is made easier. Agreed? Okay. Mm. And you, can, you can also talk about, um, just now what I was, what I was, what I was prompting is about um, liberalization means freedom, right? Freedom means what? Okay, means something to do with probably free trade agreements. Agreed? Okay, so yeah. this kind of agreements actually promotes trade. Okay, and liberalization uh, please, for, uh, please forgive me for my pronunciation. I'm a bit tired today. <laughs> yeah, liberalization of trade. Yes? yes. Okay. Okay. So um, the first part is pretty much straightforward. Okay. Um, all of you, um, I managed to capture what I've mentioned, right? I'm not going to pen this down. Yes? Okay. All right. Um, next, um, uh, Hong Ren, let's go. Let's go with you. This one is done already. You have to unmute yourself, I think. Unmute yourself. <laughs> oh. 
for, for capital flow. Okay, great. Speak directly to the mic, yeah. Uh, so, right, um, during when there's globalization, there's like in, increased in efficiency of the transportation of transfer of knowledge and information. So, when they, when the countries have like all this information, they are able to um, engage in improvement in their technology. Okay. Hey, the rest is so, yeah, the rest, I will ask you all, okay. Like, the capital flow is like the transfer of the um, uh, techno technological advancement. So, um, there's um, more information flow and um, knowledge products. Yeah. Okay, so now let, let's quickly um, look through. Um, do you all agree with... Um, with, with, with uh, or rather, uh, what are your what are your views? Shivin, what, what 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 do you think about this point? Uh, I kind of combine, I kind of combine the capital with labor a bit though. So what's the difference between the two? Why do you need to combine them? What's uh, the difference between the two? The I would like the two no? got, I I would like got more um capital and technological transfers in the country. Okay. So this will, uh, this will increase the employment opportunities and therefore uh, increase in uh, talents into the country and therefore okay. increase in employment. And then also uh, provides, provides employment for the uh, people in the country also and increase their productivity through the increase in technological transfers. Okay, so you are using technology to address labor flow yes yeah. so now let's go back to hong run uh. <laughs> let, let's, let, let's put a face to what is capital a lot of a lot of people get mixed up what is capital all right so can I, can I ask uh, you, you want to ask a question yeah uh, yeah okay go ahead yeah, yeah. Ask a question. Is, um, is fdi capital okay what, what do you all think yes or no Yes. Okay. So yeah. now let's look okay. into let's look let's put a face to capital. Hey, a lot of, a lot of students get mixed up on capital. So we can actually borrow the idea from the topic that we did last week, which is your capital and financial account. Remember those? Yeah. So what consists of your capital account? Portfolio investment. Portfolio. FBI. Foreign portfolio investment. FBI and money. Hey, if you really want to put a face to, to this, uh, all right, does any of this relate uh, to technology to you? Or not? What about, then what is capital goods then? Okay, so let, let me differentiate this. Uh, uh, let, let, me, let me quickly ad address this point first. All right, the presence of FDI may facilitate um, transfer of technology, right? Yeah, but at least in the short run, all right, it is the FDI presence in the domestic economy that, that, um, that, that, that actually creates jobs or whatever. Okay, so now we want to look, we want to put a face to, uh, let's say FDI. What kind of FDI is this? All right, so it has to be in the form of money's flow, all right? Okay, from uh, it could be it could be from foreign source or it could be domestic. It could be borrowed domestically. All right, capital itself. Uh, you can if you really want to put a face is equi equivalent to funding. Yes. So now let's look here. Okay, and whatever outcome of all this funding, okay, or this invest or this foreign direct investment will result in capital goods, result in technology transfer. Yeah. So now we want to look at what promotes funding or overseas funding to the domestic economy. Yeah, we want, to, we want to look specifically at that. So there is a fourth definition for globalization, promotes of transfer of technology. Okay, some, some, some um, definition, um, that some, def some schools definition uses that. Okay, but unfortunately, we only stick with the three. All right. So capital flow, okay, or what actually promotes capital flow? So, um, 
What's the nature of Singapore? You still remember? Small open, small open economy, right? All right. So in this case, we are open to what? Okay, we are open to labor and we are open to capital flow. Okay, so what actually promotes capital flow or what actually um, attracts capital uh, from you know, to come into Singapore? Uh, low interest rate. Uh, Singapore does not control interest rate. <laughs> yeah. Huh? So this is... Actually... Sorry? Never mind, never mind. Never mind. All right, so uh, and so <laughs> who is supposed to who wants to who wants to talk? Okay, so um, I, I this point is not really straightforward. Okay, and um, it it actually taps onto my past experience, my 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 past career experience that I I kind of have a privilege to share with you how capital actually flows. Where does it come from? Right. Also, I will show you all quickly on what I have um, brought about. Okay. Um, okay. So um, this is one of the possible reasons. Okay. So uh, improvement of your um, info communication technologies and what what is the what is the significance of this? Okay. So number one. Okay. There is a fall in communication cost, okay, and number two. Okay, let's say if there is a country in Germany, right? Okay, or firm in Germany, they want to invest in Singapore. Okay, how can they actually remit the fund immediately? How is remittance done? Okay, or how is FDI actually um how is FDI actually uh, uh, remitted from Germany to Singapore? Right? It is actually done through your banking systems, right? So with um, your improvement of your info communication technologies, okay, this actually um, allows your remittance to be done immediately, okay, or rather T plus one day. But of course, it will go through a, 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 a series of stringent checks. Like for example, if this amount of fund is, uh, where's the source of fund? Okay, has it been, uh, has it been, uh, uh, has it been uh, obtained from terrorist financing? That kind of thing, lah. Yeah. Okay, but generally the um, the speed of transfer is really fast. Okay, one day it can reach the uh, the, the, the destination country immediately. Yes. Okay, so um, it is important to put a face to what is capital first. Okay, before you uh, before you you talk about what promotes capital uh, transfer. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just now, who wants to speak? Who who was who, who was the one that want, wants to bring up a point? Anyone? Just now, I thought somebody asked a question. No? Yeah? Okay, and then another possible reason for capital transfer, okay, it is um, um, release of capital control. Okay, so if you know some countries, for example, China, okay, anybody familiar with the China systems? No? Okay, so if you try to um, deposit money into China, uh, it's easy. But if you try to remove money or capital from China back to your country, it's extremely hard. Okay, because China actually practices capital control. All right? Meaning to say they do not want capital to flow out of the country. Okay? And with countries that practices capital control, okay, this is actually very difficult okay, to, uh, to, uh, um, towards globalization. So if you argue the other way, Okay, Singapore does not practice practice capital control. It allows capital to come in and go out okay, through our infocom technologies and through no restriction in your in your capital. Yeah. So a lot of um a lot of high net worth people they actually uh, transfer their funds here. Okay, number one because of low tax. Okay, and number two because um it's easy to <laughs> it's easy to launder money. Yeah, so if you want to know how to launder money or what's this system called laundering money, you can talk to me after A levels. Yeah, but not now. Can? Wait, what, what's, what's, what's money laundering? All right, like I mentioned, this is after A levels. Like, no, 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 this is just the just definition. Like, what is it? All right, money laundering simply means that the source of the funds are not clean. 
Okay, not clean means they have they have been used, they have been obtained through illegal like uh, for example drug trafficking, um, terrorist financing, or, or you got from terror, uh, terrorists or uh, from from war. Yeah, so all these funds are actually illegal. So um, the term laundering means you make it clean again so that it can enter the finance and banking system. Right? Oh. Yeah, so ideally, you don't want these funds to come into the banking and finance system because the source of fund is questionable. You are, you are, you are actually, um, you are actually um, abetting all these kind of drug trafficking um, um, activities if you clean the money. Alright, so if any of you all wants to go to the banking system, uh, they uh, want to work in a bank next time, they will go through a, a very a, a lot of training on, on, on uh, money laundering, on how not to money launder. Uh, yeah? But if you all want to learn how to uh, uh, clean money, you can talk to me privately. Okay, not here. Okay? Okay, so <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Okay, this question is really uh, flexible. Okay, so long as you can address what promotes trade, what promotes capital, and what promotes labor? Have I covered what promotes labor? You know, just now she really mentioned briefly mentioned through technology advancement, this actually uh, attracts um um skilled labor from other countries to 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 participate in this country, right? But let's assume that when there is no technology transfer, or rather, there is no technological advancement, in what could have promote globalization, or or rather, your your labor flow? Or what kind of what kind of policies can the government do to attract people to come? They could probably relax their uh, immigration law, right? Okay, or they could have an open door policy for skilled labor. Yes, does this actually attract skilled labor for um, to come into into a particular country? Yeah. So which countries are doing that? You know now. Yeah, so yeah. your hope, sorry? Singapore. Singapore. No. <laughs> Singapore is tightening. <laughs> tightening yeah. and skilled labor. Okay, but still open doors right. for skilled labor. Yeah, sorry, tightening, right? Meaning is to Restric open more. Restricting. Tighten means restrict. Tighten the economy is. Tighten the economy means you want to restrict economic activities means contractionary policies yeah so uh, we talk about um, tightening of labor down here it simply means you are restricting labor flow okay so for singapore in the recent years uh, okay there has been a tightening of unskilled labor unskilled labor okay, and the promotion of productivity okay but they are still all doors open to skilled labor okay and high net worth individuals Okay, but if you really want to find out which are the top few countries that um, um, uh, embrace foreign immigrants, you can do a Google search. Okay, if I'm not wrong, the top is Germany. Okay, the second. Remember there was uh, some crisis in Syria, right? Agreed? Some, some crisis in the Middle East, Syria, then um, the Germany actually um, led a lot of the, uh, these, these uh, immigrants to come in. Yeah, so they are the they are the one of the most liberal uh, country that, that 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 embraces migration. A second one, I think, is Australia or, or New Zealand. I'm not I'm not, I can't be sure. Hey, go and check. I'll do a Google search on that. Yes, can. Mm. Okay, so um, any more questions we we got regarding to this question? Okay, so this question is really flexible. Okay, so long as you can address what promotes trade, what promotes capital flow, and what promotes labor flow, you will get it. I look at it as in like free trade. Can I do that? So you 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 look at I, I wrote I wrote um I wrote supply side and demand side. Supply side supply side what thing again? Supply side um supply side and demand side factors that led to free trade. So I wrote theory of CA. Look, and um, okay. economies of scale. Net like what I've mentioned earlier on. Your globalization has three components. Trade, capital, and labor. Okay, if you bring in, if you vomit out everything that you know about trade, you only address trade. You cannot address capital and you cannot address labor, right? Yeah. Yeah, so your you will have limited scope. Limited scope means you cannot get a full marks. 
And this is quite precisely, I mentioned earlier on, right at the start, what are the components of globalization? You need to address each component. Okay. Yes, Ken? Yeah, thanks. Okay, great. Thanks for asking. Um, this is a common, uh, common issue, lack of scope. Okay, let's move on to the next question, yeah? Okay. Okay, to what extent does globalization improve unemployment rate in Singapore? Who wants to try? Let's start from Ingshen. Unmute yourself. Um it improves unemployment rate as it promotes economic growth. So like because there's enlarged markets for exports, right? Like, so um, because of the greater flow of exchange of goods and services, then the increase in demand of exports will lead to increase in net exports, then increase in AD, then actual growth, then increase in employment level. Then, because there's the there's also increase in transfer of skills and technology. Then there's the capital accumulation, which will cause the shift in LRAS curve. Then got potential growth. So total economic growth. Then okay. improve so unemployment. I'm asking yeah. you unemployment. Okay, don't bring in any other objectives here. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so let's stick to unemployment. So just now you brought up two two um two points. Okay, mm. so I, I will just summarize what Inshen has mentioned. Okay, so number one, okay, we've increased trade flow. This will expand Singapore's export market. Am I right to say that? Okay, please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Inshen. Yes? Am I right to say oh, that? Yeah. And this actually in, uh, increase your export, okay, and your AD, okay, and this lowers unemployment. Am I right to say that? Yeah. So now, what is, the, what is one key assumption that you can make here to strengthen your entire flow? Um, Anybody knows or not? Not, not pertaining to Ying Xuan, uh, yeah? Imports remain the same. Exactly, all right, because trade flow promotes um, goods and services in and out, okay? If you are buying more than is selling to the rest of the world, both can increase, but if you buy more, okay, there will be more money going out, okay? Then your net export will be negative, right? Okay, so what one key assumption, okay, import remaining the same. Okay, this is, the, this is one of the few key, time, uh, key times that you uh, assume import remaining the same. But per thing, Pertaining to last week's question, uh, whenever there is an exchange rate change or when you fall in your general price level which promotes export competitiveness, you cannot assume import remaining the same. Okay? There will be a change in your import, okay? your relative price level of your import. Okay? So for those that submitted your essay, assuming import remaining the same, okay, please review your essay when I return it to you. Then, okay? So now, the second key term down here is unemployment. So now, I have, I have not heard what kind of unemployment is actually improved. This is an unemployment question, right? So if we want to address scope, we need to define clearly what are the different kinds of unemployment. Am I right to say that? Anybody brought in more than one different kind of unemployment here. Uh, yes or no? Anybody? Or all of you are just brought in unemployment only? I brought in structural unemployment only. You brought in structural unemployment. So what kind of unemployment is this example trying to tell you? I, because they say, they say to what extent. So I just thought about like, like when I did, when I thought about like, the part where it doesn't improve unemployment, right? I talk about the structure unemployment. That one, that one later, that one later, that one later. Oh. Okay, good. So, one of y'all actually brought in structural unemployment. 
But my question is, what kind of unemployment is actually improved here? Is it structural? Demand deficient. Demand deficient. So this is cyclical unemployment, right? So remember, whenever you see unemployment question types, okay, make sure you by default split them to how many points? How many kind of unemployment? Three. Three. Okay, which are? Um, the F word. Cyclical, structural, frictional. Cyclical, structural, frictional. Yeah, and we need to see how we can apply um, any of the three three down here. Okay, so this is specifically cyclical unemployment. Yes. So now you want to you want to especially you you want to you want to note this specific flow. I'm going to point out once. Okay, how does globalization or any components of your globalization okay will lead to a fall in your unemployment. So this is your cause and this is your effect. Yeah, you need to identify your cause and your effect, then you can address everything in between. Yeah? So now let's start with another cause and effect. Okay, that address, uh, anybody have any other different points or not? That improves unemployment. <laughs> but then I don't know if it overlaps or not. I talk about like specialization due to theory C E. Okay. And so like huh? Increase trade flow. Your what is your what is your cost? What is the starting point? Is it trade flow? Is it capital flow or is it labor flow? Oh, I must start from the same thing like I did in part A. Uh. Like I mentioned. Okay, part A asks ask you why is there such thing? Increase in trade, increase in capital, increase in labor. So part B is asking you how does um, the increment in any of these three will, will improve your unemployment. Yes, so you need, to, you need to know specifically what is your cause and effect here. Okay, then I think Ned should say. <laughs> um... <laughs> I wrote increase in FDI, which leads to increase in capital, then AS shift left, so it increases the capacity. Okay, increase in FDI leads to increase in LRAS. How? Because it increases the capacity. Yeah, la, but through what effect? La? <laughs> um, there are only two means that it can affect. And remember, what is your end goal? Your end goal is fall in unemployment, right? So you better end with an unemployment thing. Uh, okay, even I cannot say fever. Yeah, because increase, I don't know, there's increasing in the capacity of like... Okay, so... The I don't know, more infrastructure. So, so my question to you is, how does FDI lead to an increase in your LRAS? What's in between? Oh, uh, cause they, cause they... They invest in like let's say new infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the term that you need to bring in is capital accumulation okay. in the long run, or actually both also can. Uh, okay, transfer of technology. Okay, this will increase your LRAS. Right? So my question to you is how does it lead to a fall in your unemployment? Because that means um, it creates more jobs. Okay. So it decreases structural unemployment. So transfer of technology cre um, creates more jobs. So, you um, have to know specifically what outcome you want to achieve. Okay, let's start with structural unemployment. What causes structural unemployment? Anybody can tell me what is the cause of structural unemployment? I'm 
jumps. Jump skill me. Smash or jump skill. Job skill be flash. Okay, so now based on either of these two definitions, can you tell me how does this either of these help with job skill mismatch? So when the create FBI they are present, different kind of jobs. Okay, create different kind of jobs. And we are getting close to there. Okay, but we still need to refine. So the long-term presence of FDI promotes transfer of knowledge and technology, right? Okay. Yeah. This increases your LRAS. Okay, and at the same time, this transfer of knowledge and technology actually educates the worker. Am I right to say that? Equips them with a new skill. Yeah. Okay, so have we addressed structural unemployment? Yeah. Exactly. This is what I'm trying to talk about. Okay. So you have to know where is your ending point. Okay, and you have to build step by step to here. Okay, don't assume that I know I know one. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this is the long long run presence of FDI or capital flow. Is there any short term benefits that will ben that will improve your unemployment? Remember FDI when they come in, they come in in the form of investment, right? So this will increase in your aggregate demand. A lot of students always omit this. I don't know why. Yeah, so it, it is simultaneous. Huh? In the short run, it increases because increase in investment. Okay? The FDIs will hire workers to build capital goods or whatever. Okay, and this will increase in your investment. Okay? This will lead to a fall in your technical unemployment. Okay, and in the long run, because of capital accumulation, transfer of technology, okay, you will actually achieve lower structural unemployment. Yes? Hey, oh, oh, okay, do, or, or am I going too fast? Are you all lost by any means? No. Yeah, is this pace okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I will reopen the chat group because I have five minutes remaining and I don't want to be cut off when I talk about the NTTCs. Okay, so I will repost the group, repost the link, this join and then we'll cover the rest and we'll call it a day. Okay? Thank you.